Okay, so that gives us 495x plus 265, and instead of y, 200 minus x equals 790. Oh, thought I put a decimal there. So now we just go ahead and solve for x. Okay, so we distribute our 265. So that's 495x plus 265 times 200 is 530 minus 265 times x is 265x equals 790. We can just go ahead and combine these like terms. Okay, so 495 minus 265 is positive 230. Plus the 530 that's still here. Equals 790. Okay, so now we subtract 530 from both sides. So you have 230x equals 260. So if we divide both sides by 230, it gives us x equal to about 113.04, which we wanted it rounded to the nearest pound. So x is just equal to 113. So that's the pounds of the high-quality bean. Okay. So now we want to find out how many pounds of the low-quality bean he has to blend in. And remember, y is just 200 minus x. So that means that y is equal to 200 minus 113, or y is just 87. All right. So any questions on that one? So that's the pounds of the cheaper bean. So you can see both of them pretty much had the same approach. You find the simplest equation first, and then from there you just kind of use the information they gave you to find the other equation. And then you solve it like you did before. Right. Okay. Any questions so far? It takes a little bit of practice, but it's once you kind of use the pattern over and over, hopefully it gets a little bit easier. Okay, so we'll do one more mixture problem like that. Okay, so what if we have a chemist needs 10 liters? of 20% saline solution. Fancy name for salt water. Okay, unfortunately, they only have 5% and 20% solution. Five percent solution 
and a 25% solution. Okay, so how much of each? should be mixed together to produce a 20% solution. So just like the previous ones, you want to get your simplest equations out the way first, or the simplest equation out the way, okay? So if you look at the very last sentence, how much of each should be mixed together to produce, to produce a 20% solution, okay? So we'll let x equal the 5%, so, well, the amount of 5% solution. So that would be liters of 5% solution and we'll let y equal liters of the 25 percent solution okay now we don't know how much of the five percent or how much of the 25 percent but we do know how much they should total which is what Nope, it actually should be 10 liters. 10 liters. Yep, because you have both of them together, because that's how much the chemist actually needs. Usually that's at the beginning, not always, but usually it's at the beginning. They tell you how much total it will be. So x plus y would equal 10. Okay, so we have one of our equations. So if you wanted to write that in like a little diagram, that would be liters of 5% plus the number of liters of 25% would have to equal 10 liters. Does that make sense? All right. Okay. So now we use that information to get our second equation. Okay. Where we can start off with our diagram. Okay. So we have X number of liters of the 5% solution. and Y number of liters of 10% solution. We know together that that's going to equal 10 liters of the 20% solution. And remember your percents, you have to convert those to decimals before you can actually use them. Yes? Why do you get all 10%? Oh, sorry about that. I'm looking at the wrong one. I'm getting all mixed up with the numbers there. Yep, so this should be the 20%. And this should be 25. Thank you. Okay, so once you do that, now you convert that diagram into your second equation. Okay, so 5%, remember you have to convert that to 0 0.05. You just get the 5 and move the decimal over twice. 25%, you know that's 0.25, and 20%, you can say 0.2 or 0.20, they're both the same. Okay, so 5% of X number of liters is 
0.05x. 25% of y number of liters is 0.25y equals 20% of 10 liters. So 0 0.20 times 10. Okay, so we can always simplify that because 0.20 times 10 is just 2. Bring this up a little bit. So that gives us our second equation, 0.05x plus 0.25y equals 2. Okay, which is our other equation. So now we just go ahead and put that into a system. Point zero five x plus point two five y equals two, and x plus y equals ten. Which just like before, we just go ahead and solve for y by subtracting x from both sides. gives us the system we can use the substitution method on, 0.05x plus 0.25y equals 2, and y is equal to 10 minus x. All right. Any questions so far? So you can see the pattern for all of them are pretty much the same. If you develop that strategy, it usually helps out instead of just trying to look at it and randomly approach it. If you have some sort of structure, and it takes a lot of stress off you. Okay, leave that up, oh, continue. Looks like everyone's done. Okay, so now, just like before, replace y with 10 minus x. Okay, so if we do that, 0.05x plus 0.25 times 10 minus x equals 2. Okay. Or if we go ahead and distribute the 0.25, we have 0.05x plus 0.25 times 10. Any decimal times a 10 or 100, you just move it to the right forever how many zeros you have. So this will move over once. That would be 2.5 minus 0.25. 25x equals 2. Now we just combine those two. So 0 0.05 minus 0.25 is just negative 0 0.20 or 0 0.2. Either one would work. Plus 2.5 equals 2. And just subtract the 2.5 on both sides. So that disappears. So you have negative 0.20x equals negative 0.5. Divide both sides by negative 0.20. D 
these two cancel each other out. Anything divided by itself is always going to be 1. So x is equal to negative divided by negative is positive. So you have 0.5 divided by 0.2. If you multiply both of those by 10, you get x equal 5 over 2 or 2.5. Two okay, so you need 2.5 liters of the 5% solution, which is the same as 2.5. Either way you want to write it. So 2.5 liters of 5% solution. Okay. So now we have to find how many liters of the 25% solution. And we can do that just by y equals 10 minus x. So y is equal to 10 minus 2.5. So y is just equal to 7.5. So you need 7.5 liters of the 25% solution. Nope, let me bring that up some. All right, so any questions on that one? All right. We'll do one more story problem. Everyone's still writing. Looks like everyone's done. Oh, there you go. <laughs> All right. Okay, so let's say for our next example, the cost to produce X number of skateboards is given by C is equal to 100 plus 20X. Okay. Now the skateboards are sold wholesale. for $24. So the revenue has its own equation. And that is the revenue is equal to 24 uh -oh, times however many skateboards you sell. So that's 24x. They want to know how many skateboards do you have to sell in order for that manufacturer to break even. Oh, not do you, but does the manufacturer. Now, this one's a little bit different than the other examples, that you don't have to set this up as a system. Because in order to break even, your cost just has to equal your revenue. The amount you 
paid out is exactly equal to the amount you brought in. You didn't make any more or any less. So you just set both of them equal, and you can just solve for x. And that'll tell you your break-even amount. Okay. To break even. Clean that up a little. There we go. Your cost is equal to your revenue. Okay, so if cost is equal to revenue, then that means 100 plus 20x is equal to 24x. <coughs> Bless you. Okay, so all we have to do Solve for x. And 100 plus 20x equals 24x. We can just subtract 20x from both sides. So you have 100 equals 4x. Divide both sides by 4. Oh, sorry about that. Anything divided by itself is going to give you 1. So you know, x is equal to 25. So not all of them will be, you know, the long, lengthy, two-page problems. Some of them are pretty short and straightforward, especially when they ask for break-even points. Okay. Does that make sense? All right. So up till now, we've only dealt with two variables, either x and y or a or b or whatever. We only had two variables, two unknowns to worry about. Now we're going to jump ahead and see how we would solve it if we had three unknown variables. Oh, anyone's still writing that one? It looks like everyone's done. So system of linear equations. and three variables. Okay. Just like before, it helps to have a certain set of guidelines, a few steps. Okay. The only thing is in order to solve in three variables, you have to know how to solve in two variables, because that, those are actually steps. Steps two and three, you would have to solve in two variables. Okay. But the first step is you want to make sure they're all in standard form. You want all your variables to one side. So write all the equations in standard form. And that just means AX plus BY plus CZ equals D, where A, B, and C, A, B, C, and D are just any number at all. It could be 2X plus 4Y plus 9Z equals 84, or any, anything at all, as long as they're numbers. All your variables just have to be on the left. So A, B, C, and D are numbers. Now, your second step, you're going to choose any two of the equations. Out of the three, you're going to choose any two, and you're going to eliminate a variable. And 
And remember, you do that by adding them together and making sure your coefficients are opposite so one of them disappears. Okay. So now you pick one of the ones you just used and you apply it to the third equation that you didn't pick on the previous one, and now you eliminate the same variable. So if you picked equations one and two for this one, you can pick either one and three or two and three, so you can get rid of the same variable. So choose another pair of equations. and eliminate the same variable. Okay, now for your fourth step, you're gonna pick steps two and three, and you're going to now add those together and solve for those two variables. So if you got rid of the z in steps two and three, you'll add those two together and solve for x and y. So use the elimination or substitution method solve for the two remaining variables. Okay. So now you solve for those two, you use those two answers to solve for the variable you eliminated by plugging those two into any of the equations you started with. So you use the answers from step four. <coughs> to solve for the variable you eliminated. So to solve for the last variable. And the last step is you can check it by plugging them all in if you want to. It's really just optional if you want to double check your work. So six is just check your solution and that's optional. It's a good idea, but you don't have to do it. Say for our first example, who wants to solve, say x plus y plus z equals 500. Say 5x plus 10y plus 15z equals 4,750. And let's say 8x plus 16y plus 25z equals 7,700. And we'll call this equation 1, equation 2, and equation 3. 